We're obviously in a very tough market for finding used graphics cards right now, but today we're gonna be looking at a budget option that's pretty easy to find because miners don't really want it, and it can play every game in 1080p. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Trying to make this new video series super quick and efficient so I don't wanna to waste too much time, today we're checking out why the GTX 960 could potentially be a very easy and practical GPU option for you budget ballers out there. In today's video, we'll talk about everything you need to know about this GPU and how to find one. We're gonna do a massive 15 game benchmarking run with all the latest titles and all of that after a quick word from today's sponsor. As we all know, NordVPN has been a staple when it comes to being a trusted VPN provider provider, but now they have another highly regarded product called NordPass. NordPass is of course powered by those same NordVPN cybersecurity professionals and provides you with a password vault to store all of those complex and more importantly different passwords for all of your websites. Some features include desktop and user-friendly mobile apps, zero-knowledge architecture meaning that your passwords are encrypted locally so no one other than you has access to them, and there's even a data breach scanner that'll tell you if an online account or credit card has been leaked on the internet. NordPass is hooking you guys up with an exclusive 50% off deal with an additional month for free if you visit nordpass.com slash ZTT or use code ZTT. This deal won't last forever, so make your personal cybersecurity a priority today by visiting nordpass.com slash ZTT or using code ZTT. All right, so I figured that most of you are here for the benchmark, so I'll try to keep this informative part super short and dialed in with only the information that you actually need. A link to where you can buy the graphics card is down in the description, by the way. This here is the NVIDIA GTX 960, which was released all the way back in 2015 on the 28 nanometer platform, which just sounds ridiculous in early 2021, and the MSRP of it was $199. The TDP on the reference version is 120 watts, and NVIDIA really only recommends a 300 watt power supply to run something like this. Do keep in mind that you'll need an 8 pin PSU connector if you're thinking about throwing it into an OEM build like the one I released a couple of days ago. This specific model that we're looking at today is the EVGA GTX 960 2 gigabyte SSC version, which is rocking a base clock of 1,279 megahertz, a boost clock of 1,342 megahertz, 1,024 CUDA cores, and two gigabytes of GDDR5 VRAM. After averaging out the last 20 completed auctions on eBay, the average sold price of this car right now is $117, which is definitely higher than what it used to be, considering that this was the RX 580 price range at the beginning of last year, but we all know what kind of market we're in right now, so it is what it is. As of today, it looks like a lot of these completed auctions were definitely some hidden bid wars, there's not a lot of buy it now listings for that $117 price range, but just like any GPU in 2021, if you put in the effort, you can definitely get this card at that low price point. Based on the performance, which we're about to see in the upcoming benchmarking section and on the current price, I believe a good CPU pairing for the GTX 960 is somewhere around that Intel third or fourth gen i5 range for those super budget builds. Honestly, in 2021, I wouldn't fault you for pairing it with like a Ryzen 5 or newer Intel i5 while you wait to snipe a higher end GPU, so so in reality, if this is all you can afford or find, this will work perfectly fine with any modern CPU. After the quick info part of this video, it's now time for our 15 game benchmarking run, which I stayed up very late to complete after a Twitch live stream. I stream all of my gaming PC builds over on twitch.tv slash ZaxTechTurf, by the way, including the upcoming benchmarking rig that you're about to see, and we would love to have you over there. This here is my brand new budget GPU testing rig, and oh my goodness, this very well might be the cleanest looking GPU benchmarking rig on YouTube right now. This CPU is a Ryzen 5 3500X, which is the younger brother of the 3600 with six cores and no hyper threading. There's also 16 gigabytes of YOLO RAM clocked at 3000 megahertz. The motherboard is an ASRock B550 Razer Taichi. All of this is powered by a white Corsair RMX 750 white power supply with some extra cable extensions. And all of our games are installed on a two terabyte inland professional NVMe SSD. Without further ado, let's jump straight into these benchmarks. And the first game up is Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and in 1080p with the lowest settings, this super budget graphic graphics card actually cranked out a surprisingly higher than 60 FPS average with 73. CSGO followed up after that, and this one is definitely more of a CPU benchmark, but I included it anyway, and in 1080p with pro settings, I got an FPS average of 307. Everyone's favorite Fortnite was up after that, and in 1080p with pro settings, aka low with just far view distance, the GTX 960 managed a very impressive 189 frames per second. Following that, we have the brand new Valheim, which is definitely my current latest addiction. We actually have a ZTT dedicated Valheim server for our Discord 
of members, which is linked down below, by the way. And in 1080p with low settings, I got 81 FPS. Assassin's Creed Valhalla tailed after that. And we all know that this one is super demanding to run. And in 1080p with low settings, I only got 42 frames per second, but definitely still playable. Another GPU demanding game is Borderlands 3. And using the built-in benchmarking tool in 1080p with low settings, again, here I actually got almost at that 60 FPS mark with 58. Rainbow Six Siege was up after that, just so we can stop blasting this GPU with demanding games for a quick breather. And in 1080p with medium settings, I got 136 frames per second. Back to the demanding games though, we have Red Dead Redemption 2. This game didn't even allow me to set the game at 1080p and I had to settle for 900p with low settings because the VRAM restriction that I couldn't figure out how to remove. And with these settings, the 960 squeeze out 46 FPS. Cyberpunk 2077 was up after that. And this one didn't look so great either. In 1080p with low settings, I got just 29 FPS, but keep in mind, you definitely could play this game at this low of an FPS if you really wanted to, and this was your only option. Rogue Company followed up after that, and in 1080p with low settings, including that baked in 150 FPS cap, the GTX 960 got just under that with 148 FPS. Next up, I ran Gears 5 using the built-in benchmarking tool, and in 1080p with low settings, I got 75 frames per second. Getting towards the end here, we have Far Cry 5, and also using the built-in benchmarking tool in 1080p with low settings, we got 56 FPS. Valorant was up next, definitely got a ton of headshots while testing this one, as you would expect. And in 1080p with low settings, I got a very smooth and competitive playing experience with 236 FPS. And for the last real gaming benchmark, we have Apex Legends. Didn't realize this one moved to Steam, which makes it so much easier to benchmark. And in 1080p with low settings, I got 94 FPS. And to wrap up this 15 benchmark list, we have 3D Mark Time Spy, just as a consistent comparison against future GPU reviews that I'll do. And here we got a graphics card score of 2,386. As you can see, the GTX 960 is definitely a very capable 1080p low gaming graphics card for those budget builds. And if you're in the market for a budget build and want to watch another video, then feel free to click the one that's on the screen now and that'll help you out. But just like always, I hope you enjoyed this video.